Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about VESC, what it is, what it is not, and why you may want to care. Now this video is something I wanted to put together in hopes of benefiting a couple of different segments of the community as it were. There are a lot of one wheel folks that may or may not be hearing or seeing VESC as an option for one wheel based boards, whether that's rebuilding an old broken one and repairing or just building one from parts and not having to live with and deal with a more proprietary ecosystem of one wheeled electric skateboard balanced vehicle things. Then there are also electric skateboard riders who up until now may or may not have had experience with higher end boutique boards, DIYs, customs and things like that, and have essentially just had experience with mass market production boards, budget boards, things that use ESCs from large scale producers like Hobby Wing, Ling Yi, and those are non-configurable, they are as they are type of motor controllers. And so they haven't had the experience with that kind of product. Now that's the current control. Seems smooth and now duty cycle control. Woo! And so we're gonna look at a couple of different things regarding ESCs and VESC, which should be a decent primer, not a very, very deep dive. Otherwise this video would be over an hour long, but just a primer for the uninitiated of this small segment of an already small segment of a very niche hobby. So what is VESC? It stands for Vetter Electronic Speed Controller. And Vetter comes from the last name of the creator of this project, Benjamin Vetter. And an electronic speed controller is a type of motor controller, which we will take a brief look at in just a moment. But that is what it stands for. And it would likely benefit you to understand what an ESC or electronic speed controller even is before we get to the ins and outs of VESC. So what even is an electronic speed controller? An electronic speed controller is a device that is designed to control the speed and direction of a motor. Now, naturally, personal electric vehicles, such as electric skateboards, one wheel shaped type things, unicycles, scooters, e-bikes, what have you, have motors and in order for them to work, you have to drive them somehow. And that's where the ESC comes in. For example, this is an ESC. It has a power input and it has an area where you connect the motor and it has generally <laughs> a logic stage which receives an input of some sort and then there's the power stage which actually drives the motor which is governed by the logic stage via a series of electronic switches or something there like. The big picture is generally the same across many different types of ESCs. And so what the ESC does in a nutshell is it takes power from a power source, in most cases a battery, and then it takes an input, whether that's a remote control, if it's a balancing unit or whatever, a throttle from a scooter or an e-bike, whatever, that takes an input and then it uses that input to dictate the direction and the speed that the motor spins. And so that is interpreted by the logic stage and then that once again governs what the power stage does. And so that being said, VESC, Vetter Electronic Speed Controller, is not really a speed controller. It's not one device. What VESC actually is, is an open source software project. Now I'll have relevant links in the description below. You may or may not want to dig through those links and crawl down that rabbit hole and see what really goes into the nitty gritty of VESC. But the long and short of it is that VESC is not any one device, it is a project, specifically a software project. And what's been published on the GitHub, on the forums, and what is worked on and talked about amongst the community that contributes to this project is at base a hardware reference schematic for different versions of VESC-based hardware, and then a coinciding set of firmwares that are meant to run on that hardware. Now, as I'll illustrate in a little bit, the hardware itself is fairly changeable, and this is why a VESC is not one actual physical thing. The VESC project does include reference hardware schematics, and end users, companies, and hardware designers use that to create their own version of a VESC-based motor controller, or ESC. And what becomes central to VESC is whether or not these hardwares can run VESC firmware. And this is one of the strengths because the wide variety of VESC based motor controllers are often tailored to specific purposes, specific vehicle shapes, specific power expectations, 
Now to highlight the variety of VESC based motor controllers, I have a few here to display for you. This is probably the oldest one I actually own. This is an old Inertion Fock box. This company is long since defunct and this is a single motor controller with an upward limit of about 60 volts. So as this is meant for 12S, which means 12 cells in series and voltage above that will likely fry it. But these are what used to come in the old Lacroix prototypos and these were very popular and this is quite old but this is a VESC based motor controller. This is a Fock Box Unity. It is a dual controller. This is one of the more recent ones which I do not recommend buying because they have a very high defect rate. But this is now the third Unity that I could not configure with the USB. This is really more of a display piece just to have it. I would not recommend currently putting a Unity into anything that you're building. But once again, for display purposes, this is a type of VESC based motor controller. There are nuances to the firmware that used to run and can run on this now, but that's not really the purpose of this video. But here's just another one. Similar to the Unity and probably even worse in quality is this thing, a Tenka. This is based on the same hardware as that with way less on it and this thing is straight up trash if you see these run in the other direction but technically this is a VESC based motor controller. This is another dual motor controller this is a FSESC made by the company Flipski or Flipsky and I have used these before in fact one of those is in this this is the first DIY e-skate I ever put together and it still runs it still runs so that thing is over two years old and it still works but yeah there is a VESC based motor controller and very similar to the one that I showed you is in that board. If you are a one wheel person who's curious about using VESCs to repair or rebuild or just build a, a, a similar type of contraption, then chances are you've seen something like these. Now to, again, really oversimplify it, these are made by Shaman Systems. They are called Fokkers. Fokker is a play on the initialism FOC, which stands for Field Oriented Control. It is one of the protocols used in controlling motors. And the long and short of it is that this is a scooter controller. It's a single motor controller made for very high amperage use. And minus the heatsink and modifying where the capacitors are and where some of the wires are, you can take that same PCB layout and you come up with a bare bones type of thing, which is small enough to fit in certain controller boxes. And since a one wheel motor or a scooter motor or an e-skate motor really is all just the same philosophy of brushless DC motor with hall sensors, the VESC based controllers can kind of detect and just run said motors. All right, that works. So the motor is functional, tire looks good. Let's give it one more. Yeah, tire looks fine to me. All right, successful tests. Moving on to VESC firmware, which really is the meat and potatoes of the VESC project. It is the firmware that runs the ESCs. Firmware really is just software that runs on a set of hardware and makes it work. So VESC firmware is the software that runs on those kinds of ESCs and makes them work. Now, what is usually most attractive about motor controllers that run on VESC firmware is the fact that they are configurable. You can set the settings within them that dictate how the motor itself runs and also the input used to govern the behavior of the motor. Now to clear confusion, because the VESC project is an open source project, open source and configurable are two separate things. So the VESC project being an open source project is not the reason that it is configurable. The firmware itself is configurable, but they're separate things. So open source doesn't mean you can change the settings on it. Open source has more to do with the fact that the source code behind the software is available and there are certain licenses that govern its end user use and its modification and redistribution. I will put some links regarding that in the description below. It is not my area of expertise because GPL licenses is a whole different world, but I just wanted to put it out there that configurable firmware is not the same as open source. It happens to be that VESC firmware is both open source and configurable, but they're not the same. So what makes VESC 
and the subsequent variety of motor controllers that run VESC special. Why should you care? Well, some of the central strengths of VESC is that since it can run on a variety of different motor controllers, it can, by virtue of that, run a very wide variety of motors. You can run a small or medium-sized e-skate motor, a medium Wumbo scooter motor, or a no longer in use because the original thing it came from is now broken, one of these. This is, despite it being special in many ways, still just a brushless DC motor. It is wired in three phases. It has hall sensors, a temperature sensor, a five volt to ground. This is still just a BLDC motor. And because of that, if you stick one of these VESC based controllers into an appropriately sized container, this can be configured to just detect and run any kind of motor. Now, for years, VESC-based motor controllers have been used in high-end boutique and DIY custom electric skateboards. It's kind of the bread and butter of that niche of the market once you get above the budget boards and the mass market production boards. When you really get into the upper tier, more expensive stuff, they all run on a version of a VESC-based controller, usually because being able to configure the ESC is important to tune it to the specifications of a certain set of motors, a certain size of battery, things like that. Now, it's equally important because VESC is such a great thing to really highlight what VESC is not. To begin with, I've mentioned this before, VESC is not a device. So this is not a VESC and neither is this. So a VESC is not a thing really. You can get a hardware device, an ESC that is a VESC, but those are made by one particular company because they hold the trademark to VESC. They work with Vetter and so their particular hardware ESCs in a trademark sense are VESCs. But that's not really that important. VESC in a nutshell is an open source software project. There are multiple people in different communities who contribute to it. They contribute code, they beta test, they bug report. And so the collective experience and testing of the VESC community all works into the mainline stable releases of this kind of firmware. Also, VESC is not perfect by any stretch. There are still bugs in it. It is constantly being improved. A lot of the bugs that come up come up by accident and people may or may not have discovered certain bugs because they've gotten hurt from those bugs. And so one thing that I don't want people to think is that if you are a one wheel rider, that VESC is this perfect utopian green pasture that means ultimate freedom. It doesn't. It does lead to freedom because of the configurability of it and the fact that it is a community contributed project, but VESC inherently by its nature is kind of messy. The VESC project doesn't encompass lighting and other creature comforts that one may or may not be used to in mass market production type of boards. And so things that do those types of functions end up having to be designed and manufactured and created to work alongside a VESC based controller by someone else. And the project itself, the testing, all of it is done by people, which are naturally imperfect. And so when you have a lot of very bright, talented software and hardware engineers collaborating into a central project, you do have an interesting variance of chemistries and egos that all kind of blend in very interesting human dynamics. But that's also a strength of the project is the fact that you have a number of very bright, talented engineers and developers and hardware and software designers contributing to something that they all really, really believe in. And that the end result of this work is open for everyone to use, change, benefit from. And that in and of itself is a very beautiful thing. So I hope that was helpful. I really tried to simplify it as much as I could without betraying the possible viewers that have quite a bit of expertise in this field and experience with these kinds of things. There's always a weird balance trying to 
not dumb things down, but really make them accessible for new folks and folks who don't have a lot of expertise in this area. So I hope I did a decent job. If anything, I really hope that I sparked your interest in an area of learning and accessibility that I think benefits a lot of people. It certainly has benefited me as an e-skate builder, repair person, and rider. And it is something that has really enriched my experience of personal electric vehicles, especially board shaped ones. I'm not a big rider of e-bikes and scooters and EUCs. I'm very much like, I like riding a board shaped type of object. And so it has very much enriched my experience of that. And I think it does that for a lot of different people. I do appreciate your viewership. Take care of yourselves and don't fall.